Hello, welcome to the Encouraging Word of today. Today is Thursday, October the 21st, and we're going to pick up here in the wonderful Encouraging Word of God. And while today's word is encouraging, it's also a challenging word to us as it addresses an issue uh, that certainly we are experiencing in everyday life right now with the political situation, those who have been placed in power and everybody's idea of um, what is right and what is wrong and who should and who should not be in power. But we reminded today that God is sovereign over all things and that he, uh, he allows things to come to pass uh, because he's working out his will and uh, his eternal kingdom is coming. He's setting things up uh, for uh, his purposes to come to pass. If you remember, he told us to pray uh, in times of life and says, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so we have to be careful when uh, we come to situations in life where we are, because in, in the fullness, we don't know when the will of God in the uh, times uh, of God's final uh, dealings with man will come to pass. But we do know that we're growing, growing closer and closer to God's uh, kingdom coming. We, we're getting closer and closer to Christ coming back. And to, to do uh, what has to be done to get to that place, then certainly there are certain things that um, will come to pass and government will be corrupted and it will be led by false leaders and rulers and, and uh, they will stand to say that they represent some form of God, but it won't be the true God. And certainly we know during the tribulation period, those things are going to come to pass. And so as we pick up here today in Second Peter, there's a great challenge with our hearts. As he says, man, yesterday, don't forget that God uh, is here with you walking through. And he, he, he says, man, the damnation and the judgment of those who do wickedness and unrighteousness, it's not a long time off. It's, it's here knocking at the door. It's a short time away. And so as we pick up here in verse 9, he says these words. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. And so he says, yes, you may see this. Uh, unjustness going on. You may see this wickedness and unrighteousness going on, but listen, God knows how to deliver the godly out of, out of um, the temptation and to reserve the unjust to judgment. But then we pick up in verse 10 and he starts this conversation about those who have been given positions of power that are ungodly, that are wicked, that are unruly. He says, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of unrighteousness and despise government. And so here we go. So Certainly today, man, there's a bunch of people who are the despise government, the government that's been placed over them. And that's why I say we always have to remember uh, that when Jesus Christ came and was walking and living the perfect life on this earth, if anyone was ever deserved to be treated rightly, it was Christ. And he stood before one of the most wicked governments of the world uh, to, the, to the point of this world, to, the, to that point of time. And Pilate looked at Christ and, and said, hey, do you not know that I have the power to either crucify you or set you free? And Jesus told him right then and there, Pilate, you'd have no authority. You'd have no power. You wouldn't have this position unless my father in heaven allowed it. And so uh, God says, I appoint the kings and I remove them. I turn the hearts of the kings like rivers of waters in my hand. God is the one who knows how to bring his purposes about even with ungodly, wicked rulers. And so he says, Man, the Lord knows how to deliver the just, I mean, the uh, the godly out of uh, the temptations, but he knows how to reserve the unjust for their day of judgment. But but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in lust and of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. And there's a lot of speaking evil of dignitaries today. There's a lot of self-willed presumptuous people, not understanding the times and the seasons in which we're living, not understanding the will and the works of God. And so therefore we got to be careful, careful. We may not agree and we shouldn't agree with ungodly God, uh, ungodly government. But at the same time, God could be using that ungodly government to bring about his purposes. And so notice what he says here, verse 11. He says, whereas angels, angels, which are great in power and might, bring not really railing accusations against them before the Lord. And so he says, the mighty angels of heaven know better to keep their mouths shut 
if God allows evil to, to take position and power, unjustness to do that, because God is working out something for his glory and for his kingdom and even for the good of those who love him. For we do know that Romans 8, 28 says, for all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes. And the only reason we don't want that kind of government in over us right now, whether it be on either side, is because it's not accomplishing our purposes, our self-will. We're presumptuous self-willed, bringing railing accusations against these dignitaries, evil speaking of them. And God says that should never be. Not even the angels of heaven do that. And so we have to be careful here as believers that we don't fall into this trap, that we don't... Uh, that we don't become, as verse 12, but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive in themselves a reward of unrighteousness as they count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Oh boy, you talk about looking at the, down the lens of time and looking where we are today. A lot of evil speaking of dignitaries, whether it be on one side or the other <laughs> uh, and how we're we're self-willed and we're presumptuous and it's god calls that unrighteousness and he says you're a brute beast you can't control and bridle your passions you don't know how to pray and seek the face of god you don't know how to keep your mouth shut when you need to and so jesus gives us the example of what we do and how we should live but then he says these words spots are they and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you having eyes full of adultery that they cannot cease from sin beguiling unstable souls and a heart they have exercised with covetous practices and cursed children which have forsaken the right way and have gone astray following the way of Balaam the son of Barsar who loved the wages of unrighteousness but was rebuked for his inequity the dumb ass speaking with a man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet these are wells without water, clouds carried about with a tempest to whom the midst of darkness is reserved. For, they, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, whose, whose they were clean escape from those who live from error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption. For, of a man, for, uh, for who of a man is overcome? Of the same he is bought in bondage. And so he says, listen, what you need to do is pray. What you need to do is trust God. What you need to do is keep your mouth shut and trust that God knows what he's doing. What you need to do is not be walking in the flesh, but living in the spirit. For those who's, who live in the flesh shall reap to themselves destruction, but those who sow to the spirit shall reap to themselves everlasting life. So we have a challenge today that lays before us. And oh, how I pray that we take consideration on this passage. It's hard. I know it's difficult. I deal with it all the time. There's things I want to say and uh, I should not say them. I should pray and seek the face of God. God is just and God is all powerful. And I promise you that he is not letting the unjust go unpunished. He is coming and he knows how to deliver the godly. Notice what he says. Go back to that verse and man, let this Sink deeply into your hearts, verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. Trust me, God knows who's in power. Trust Him to do good with it. And I pray you go forth today mightily in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I pray that you are encouraged.